And I think what I would just reiterate here is that uh, we know that uh, requirements work. Uh, we have not seen a disruption as it relates to requirements to the industry. Where we have seen disruptions has been related to uh, these convoys and protests. So the truckers in Canada uh, last night shut down the Ambassador Bridge, which carries about a quarter of U.S. Canada trading goods. Um, so what's the administration's response uh, to this action, and what steps are being taken to ensure the free flow of goods, and also any preventative steps being taken to address a possible blockade on the Michigan side of that bridge? Well, let me first start by saying I know there's been some suggestion, not by reporters necessarily at all, but that uh, this congestion is related to the vaccine requirements. It's not. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying I'm going to get to the protests, but the protests uh, going on across Canada, which uh, have spread to a bridge, are leading to sporadic congestion and blockages. I would, just to go back to my point I was trying to make, is that um, across what we've seen with these requirements is across a range of industries, vaccine, vaccination requirements have been implemented with no disruptions, have helped increase vaccinations. These requirements help protect more people from COVID, and there's been zero indication across these industries that they would lead to disruptions, including on this policy. Um, we, of course, support, as you know, the, the right to freedom of speech and protest, um, but we, and while we do see some of these congestion due to protests, it is clear that these disruptions have broadened in scope beyond the vaccine requirement implementation. Uh, we, beyond that, we are, of course, in touch with our Canadian counterparts, um, uh, but I don't have any updates in terms of specific steps. Following up on the trucker question from earlier, uh, inspired by the, the so-called Green Convoy in Canada, uh, Canada, a group of U.S. truckers say they're planning a similar protest in Washington, D.C., possibly for March 1st, uh, to oppose COVID vaccine mandates. That date's obviously uh, would coincide with President Biden's State of the Union address. Uh, as you know, the trucker convoy in Ottawa has been very disruptive and paralyzed parts of the city's downtown. Is the administration making preparations to be ready for an upcoming uh, Freedom Convoy plan for D.C.? And does White House have any concerns about this similar, a similar protest happening here in the nation's capital? Uh, and do you mean by preparations like security preparations, yeah, or security do you mean preparation, or is it on your radar? I, I, I'd have to check with our team on security preparations. I think what I would just reiterate here is that uh, we know that uh, requirements work. Uh, we have not seen a disruption as it relates to requirements to the industry. Where we have seen disruptions has been related to uh, these convoys and protests. Now, everybody can peacefully protest. We fully support that, but it's important to note where the disruption is occurring. Two topics. The first one uh, is going to be the truckers and then Russia. But first, the, the, the Canadian uh, the movement in Canada, the truckers. Uh, so the Ottawa mayor has asked for 1,800 additional police police uh, officers to quell what he called the insurrection. You know that it's been a rallying cry for the far right, this movement. And uh, Prime Minister Trudeau yesterday accused the, the protesters to, of trying to blockade Canada's economy and democracy. Does the White House share this perspective on the movement? That's not how we've described it. Do you, uh, you said yesterday, just again, that the CBP was not uh, impacted by the movement at the moment. Now with what happened at the bridge, it has had an impact. Um, isn't that, considering that now trade is concerned, uh, shouldn't the White House uh, give more emphasis, put more emphasis on what's going on on the other side of the border? I don't think we've ever de-emphasized. I just think I was trying to convey that uh, while there was um, kind of a view uh, by some that it was related to vaccine requirements. It wasn't. It was related to congestion created by the protests, which I think is for, important for people to understand. In terms of what's being done, of course, we're closely engaged. Department of Homeland Security would be the right entity to talk to. This situation in the Canadian or in, in Ottawa, the truckers' protest, there does seem to be evidence that these uh, uh, truckers are getting support from conservative forces or right-wing forces in the U.S. Um, are you investigating that at all? Is there any kind of you know involvement of, of U.S. authorities in looking at those money flows going to these truckers, and, and are you concerned about it? Well, uh, I, I would say a couple of things. This doesn't answer your question, but I just want to get this out there, too, on this particular topic, and then I'll come around, I promise. Um, 
We have uh, been engaged uh, since the outset. Well, some of it hopefully answers your question, I should say, of the protests. Uh, there have been zero impacts to CBP operations, which is a question people have understandably been asking us. Some, some shipments were rerouted by our law enforcement partners to other points of entry due to road closures. Some shippers have had to reroute, uh, but CBP has been in communication uh, throughout to ensure shipments can be cleared and onto the normal routes. Uh, in terms of an assessment of any other engagement um, from here, uh, we have we, we don't really have any update on that uh, or any any investigation to read out at this point.